Okay. Brian Kluger, Boomstick Comics, and High Def Digest. It's grass. It's just grass. So, in the tall grass, um, this this film uh, it's an, a great adaptation. I'm curious what the spark was after you read this novella. What what, what was the spark in that that led you here uh, into the tall grass to walk in there? Well, uh, the spark was really the grass itself. That this sort of entity, which is both an environment and an organism, and I could imagine was like lit by beautiful sun and seemed so calm and peaceful and inviting and yet was harboring really, really terrible stuff. Um, I thought there was something very powerful, unique, and archetypal about that. And, um, but then the story is really powerful too and is honestly one of the most disturbing pieces of fiction I've ever read. Um, so of course I wanted to adapt it. Right, and I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I was very much inspired by your adaptation. What was the process like in adapting this book or this right. novella into your own? <laughs> yeah, it was well. It's an interesting adaptation because, you know, you you couldn't literally adapt the novella uh, and make it into a feature film. It really would only be a short film. So I had to find a way that was analogous to what the story was, but that would still feel like um, it could uh, comfortably become a feature length story. And really what I came up with was something that was already seated in the book, which is there's a character um, who's referred to, but we don't really meet, named Travis McKean. And he is the father of yes. the unborn child of Becky, one of um, the siblings who get lost in the grass. And I thought, well, what if Travis came looking for her after she disappeared? And then I thought, you know, that really reminds me of Orpheus in the Underworld. It's like Orpheus going after Eurydice in Hades. Orpheus stumbled on through the cold marshes, with Eurydice gliding ahead of him, always just out of reach. He called to her, but as he did so, the mists rolled back before his eyes. And, and I'd already thought, well, the field reminds me a bit of the Elysian fields from Greek myth. And I started to see that, you know, there was something a kind of mythological thing going on here that was very much in keeping with the archetypal nature of what the original story was and I could see how I could expand on it without betraying it and so the movie itself without giving too much away contains the novella fairly much intact you know with small alterations but it's in many ways is very extremely faithful to novella but it just sort of continues it it just expands right. upon it no, I, I, like I said, I was inspired by that. And I love that, you know, making this film in the horror aspect, a lot of it's shot in daylight, which you right. don't see too much. And right. I love that. And uh, did you, is there any sort of technique to film in daylight and make something that scary? I think it was the environment. I think yeah. that, you know, to be honest, a lot of my work was done for me by the simple fact that if you were to actually now walk into a field, it's frightening. No, yeah. Because you immediately lose your sense of where you are. There's no, there's no way to get bear, any kind of bearings and you really can only see about two feet in front of your face and I think there's probably some kind of genetic memory that we have of what it was like to be an early human walking into that space where a predator could attack you and right. you wouldn't know it until it was too late. So a little bit like Jaws, like it's a very yeah. primal kind of thing to be lost in the ocean. Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. And this is an ocean of grass. Um, so uh, I think my work as a director had a lot to do with, well, just making sure that this is a fully immersive in, um, environment and and then actually pragmatically figuring out how to get a whole camera crew in there. Yeah, because it looked beautiful, like the green grass and like the ocean waves of the grass was great. And it reminded me a little bit of uh, cube in that you have these great characters who are trapped in this small confined space and like we need a way out and everything's not as it seems and I thought that was excellent I loved it oh thank you yeah <laughs> it definitely shares some DNA with cube stop in front of you
the difference being, in this case, it's sort of an organic cube, and it's not, it's not contained. Like it's, it's whereas cube is about people who are trapped in literally cubes, yeah. small spaces. This is sort of an open, a vast open space, but which, as you say, is kind of at the same time paradoxically is also confining. Yeah, no, I, I really liked it, and I have to ask a, a, a fun question: it Was there would there be any sort of person or thing that would entice you to walk in the tall grass? <laughs> Me like, personally, <laughs> like, like you know, like something like uh, like, like Hunter S. Thompson waving a briefcase in the tall grass. You're like, yeah, I'm coming in for this fear and loathing in the tall grass. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I wouldn't go in there. No, sir. Bad idea. Uh, yeah, no, I, well, you know, the funny thing about it is it doesn't seem threatening when you're outside of it. Right. It's only when you, it, you'd be too late, you see. You yes. Would, you'd be standing outside going, oh, that looks so neat. I want to go in there, yeah. which actually is your impulse. And then once you're in, you're like, I want to get out. <laughs> but then it would be too late. Right. And my last question for you, um, Obviously, you're a huge fan of cinema, motion pictures. Uh, are there any certain scenes in films that have always stuck with you that inspired you from a young age or throughout oh. your career? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes there are too many. Um, uh, well, you know, I feel like my first conscious memory of seeing a movie in a movie theater was uh, The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Oh, yes. Which was a Ray Harryhausen movie, and I remember the centaur in it. Um, who's also kind of a cyclops centaur, and that really had a profound effect on me. And I feel like, I feel like everything I've done has some sort of basis in mythology, and it, hopefully not too self-consciously, what I've been doing is trying to take those mythological concepts and set them in the present or the near future. Um, but I always feel like they're tapping into the same thing. And I feel like with this movie, and that story in particular, that it was really touching some kind of nerve that's like very basic and primal to what we are, who we are as humans. Uh, great, thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs>